how do you mitigate stress, you is the proper term, with nitrogen? So a couple of things that we're looking at a lot, Stu, is number one is, is what are your management practices? Are we looking at an application all in the fall? Are we looking at split applying? Are we looking at some random applications throughout the growing season? And that's all with the synthetic form. Then as we get into this class of, of understanding of, of biologicals and live bacteria, whether it's a Pivot Bio, an Invita, Utricia in an Amino, any of those products where you're actually utilizing live bacteria to harness atmospheric nitrogen, to me, that's a whole nother play on this. When we have risk of loss on those synthetic nitrogen sources, whether through de uh, denitrification, leaching, volatilization, now you're talking about a bacteria that's either sprayed on the plants or placed in the root system that's there all season long and not lost. And I, I will say, uh, as I've made a lot of observations about out scouting fields, I could see some differences, especially when our mineralization level was low from capturing that because we were lacking rainfall for so many days, weeks in a row. So would this indicate to some farmers that a blend of those would be the best way to manage risk? To me, yes. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big diversifier anyways. When I, think of, when I think of our own farming operation, we've got multiple hybrids we plant, multiple varieties we plant. We don't put all our nitrogen out. We don't put all our eggs in one basket. And I think diversifying that out and understanding, you know, there's plenty of loss mechanisms out there, but which one could, could help benefit during this timing? That plant, whether it's corn or soybeans, it's demanding certain nutrition all season long. And sometimes we gotta bridge that gap of when it's demanding it, but maybe it can't access it. So to me, some of these functions, some of these products that we're utilizing are bridges for that. And I've been impressed with what I've seen. I've studied this stuff for the last three years. Every year's been different. This one will be no different. We've got a study down here. It's got 27 different replicated treatments in it just to better understand it. And uh, I'm excited to get that data back. How is it performing, what you've seen so far? So the, the, I always judge everything that we're doing, not only by comparing it versus a synthetic applied um, opponent, but then I also have strips out there that have no nitrogen, period. And the reason I put that no nitrogen out there, so number one, we can visually see what the symptomology would be when you're lacking nitrogen, but number two, so that we can better understand what the natural soil around here is mineralizing and producing. If it's not mineralizing very much, then I know all the nitrogen I applied, that plant's more dependent on it. If that no applied nitrogen um, strip ends up yielding pretty gosh darn good, you know, then then, then great. We're, we're we're lucky around here with our soils that we have and how much high organic matter and how much mineralization we can sometimes get if we get the right, right environmental conditions, but I have to compare both. Any other research you've done in stress mitigation of other stresses? So the, so the one thing, you know, again, we talk about the nitrogen stress, we talk about abiotic stresses, and one of the things I've been utilizing, you know, we're standing here with our, this is our old girl, she's an old research heggy on a 20 foot boom. And then we have, you know, old generation versus new generation with the, uh, with the drone. And one thing that I've been trying to better understand is we all have, we all have an 80 acre field or 160 acre field. And there's spots in that field that we always know, man, it's, it's lower yielding or something's going on here. Maybe it's water holding capacity. And I know I'm going to lose nitrogen. Can I go out there and make a variable rate applied application with something like a drone? I don't need to do the whole 80 acres, but I need to hit these five acres. And maybe I need to hit them with a nitrogen product or maybe a micronutrient product or, or some sort of algae based or do I need to take something like this and just hit the whole thing and this is something that I'm really excited to to dive in a little bit deeper as we keep going forward and we've got some good data hopefully we'll be bringing back this year there's lots of drones on the market yeah why did you happen to pick this one and what is it so this one here this is an Agris DJI T30 um, the next size up from this is a T40 and all that means a T30 is a 30 liter tank or eight gallons 40 is 40 liter now they're working on a T50 um, I wanted to do this strictly for research. So when we are trying to do all these late season studies, and sometimes it's hard for our operators to do it, where I want to do a, you know, a 40 of an 80, or I need to do a 20 acres here, nothing here, 20 acres, nothing here. I can put a shape file in that drone, send it out there with some of my treatments, let it do its thing, let my intern team work with me, get those treatments and not have to borrow anybody, bother anybody, excuse me. What's exciting about it is some of these growers, I said, hey, I'm going to go out here and do this. Well, what are you spraying? I'll tell you at harvest, just give me the yield data. And you know, they're putting their trust in me, I'm not putting something damaging out there, but I, it's the excitement of them coming out and seeing the drone first and foremost, and then understanding what this technology can potentially bring us in the future. Okay, a couple of great ideas for stress mitigation. Is there any other stress that you have uh, uh, seen this year that but, you've had, had some at least thoughts about you know the one stress we talked about the field day this morning was um was that smoky weather that we were dealing with from the wildfires and what what did it cause you know, I had a question today they said um do you think all that smoke maybe increase the uh the sulfuric acid in our atmosphere maybe we'll get some sulfur out of it through the rains potentially we could um 
that stress was tough this season, let alone there's two, there's, there's positives and negatives. The positives, it, it reduced the sunlight so it wasn't as hot, so maybe these plants didn't stress out as much, but number two, it reduced the sunlight, which is something that these plants need. The other thing is when we were looking at weed control season long, you can drive around and look at non-GMO and list fields, extend flex fields. We got a lot of weeds that are still pushing through. We were, not con we were not in a good growing conditions for conducive weed kill and a lot of our herbicides struggled. So as I come back and make resprays, they're working fantastically because we have bright, sunny days. Um, that's a challenge in itself and that's a stress. That weed is competing against that plant. It's, that's a stress to that plant. For those farmers who have uh, uh, weeds that are in corn, mm -hmm that uh, may create some uh, more generations of wheat for next year in yeah. soybeans. What sort of suggestions might you have there? So we've been talking about this a lot. The nice part about corn is nobody ever wants to go in it right now, so you can't see what's the issues that you have. I've been uh, been fortunate. I've been I visited with Aaron Hager a little bit on this early early on from the U of I and was asking his opinion when we were doing some we seeing some carryover issues and then what the future is going to entail. Residuals are always going to be our friend. Um, if we can get as much residual out there that is safe for the plant, but can keep that weed from emerging, that's crucial. Um, overlapping residuals, I like to say in most cases, are extremely beneficial, unless you don't get any rainfall. If you don't get any rainfall, then those overlapping residuals that struggle to make them work. Case in point, why a lot of these non-GMOs are tough. The last thing, when it comes in list beans, and United Prairie is a pretty large enlist company, um, in the past you've had some growers that are running enlist and roundup, some that are maybe running uh, Liberty and roundup, few that are running enlist and Liberty. Next year you will see a lot of enlist and Liberty. Throw two modes of action that are out there that are effective on those weeds and not just water hemp. Water hemp's the one we focus on, but when we look at morning glory and we look at lamb's quarter and these velvet leaves are a bear, use chemistry that can kill them both and effectively and then we just have to work with mother nature and hope she helps out but i, I think those are some key findings and some things that we will implement going into 2024.